So let's talk about filters. And we talk about first order filters. So let us draw the circuit here. We have this resistor and then it's a capacitor and it's connected to this network is this uh, voltage source V I of T. We have a resistor R, we have this capacitor C and the current that flows through this network is I of T, okay? So obviously uh, the voltage that gets developed across this register is indicated by VR. The voltage that gets developed across this capacitor is indicated by VC or its output voltage. If we take the output voltage across this uh, capacitor, okay. If we take the output voltage across the register, it will be VR will be V out in that case. So right now we are uh, interested in measuring the voltage across this capacitor. So let, we'll call it as a uh, output voltage VO. And uh, what we need to do here, we have to obtain the frequency response. Of this network. And to do so, we'll apply the KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law. No? Uh, to this network. So we can write VI of T that equals I of T into R plus I of T into one over J omega C. And why we write here because uh, one over J omega C is nothing but XC and XC, this is uh, called as reactance or impedance of a capacitor. All right, just like we have a resistance of a resistor. So capacitance uh, has a resistance Usually it has a name of reactance or impedance uh, indicated by one over J omega C. It's also can be written as minus J omega C. Okay. Uh, so we know that this is the equation and then we have this output expression voltage across this capacitor is again the current multiplied by the impedance, which is one over J omega C. Okay, so from this network, uh, from this question, we can get the value of I of T, which is uh, V O of T. All right. So uh, once we have this equation, uh, so we can plug in the value of I of T right back into this equation. Let's say we have this equation one, and then we, we have put the value of I of T here. So we can first write V I of T is equal to I of T uh, in bracket R plus one over J omega C. And then V I of T would be uh, value of I of T is this one. And this is R plus one over J omega C. All right. So we can get the expression of uh, VO by VI, that is the gain, all right. VO of T divided by VI of T, that equals one over J omega C R plus one by J omega C. And that comes out to be R C J omega plus one. Okay.
So once that is obtained, uh, we can obtain the magnitude and the phase. So let's start with obtaining the magnitude first. That comes out to be uh, one by square root of this term, which is uh, one square plus omega square, r square, c square, right? So that's the uh, basically a plus b i and the magnitude will be so magnitude z would be square root a square plus b square and uh, phi that is phase would be uh, tan inverse b by a okay uh, so that's how we obtain this value we can further simplify this to be one divided by uh, square root of one plus uh, omega divided by omega c whole square. So here omega c is uh, nothing but one over tau, which is time constant and time constant is uh, nothing but the rc. So you can see that omega c uh, value of omega c is one over rc and it's in the denominator. So uh, this is the cutoff frequency. It is also called as T is the time constant and omega C is the cutoff frequency. We'll see what is cutoff frequency. All right. And similarly, we can have the phase of V of T divided by V of T that is uh, tan inverse because we have this uh, j over here. This is the value over here. Omega RC by one. And because we have a j, so that is this minus comes out to here. So it will be minus tan inverse omega RC by one. And that can further be simplified as minus tan inverse omega by omega c, where omega c is one over rc, or rc is one by omega c. So uh, we have this uh, two cases. For the case one, let's say we have the case one. Now we obtain the frequency response. So the case one is says that uh, the omega, which is the angular frequency in rad per second is very, very less than the cutoff frequency. So in that case, we have to obtain the magnitude and the phase. So the magnitude would be uh, in the, for the case one, VO of T, VI of T, this is the magnitude. And it, it comes out to be approximately equals to one. All right. Why? For instance, uh, if we have omega is equal to zero, let's go back and check this out. So these are the values that we uh, got this expression. This is for the magnitude and this is for the phase. So if uh, for the omega is equal to zero, so uh, this uh, term goes to zero and the, this magnitude takes the value of one right over here. So that's why we have this approximately equals to one for omega is equal to zero. And for omega is very, very less than omega C is approximately equal to one. So to obtain the plot, uh, let's say we have this uh, system over here and uh, we have this uh, omega equals to zero, this point. This point omega is equal to zero and this magnitude would be one. Okay, so this is the magnitude V of T divided by VI of T. So let's, uh, let's name it as a gain the gain of this network. Okay, 
So this is right over, we are over here. And uh, similarly, uh, we'll obtain the phase also. For the case two, uh, let's, let's obtain the phase also. The phase would be VO of T divided by VI of T. So for the omega is equal to, is equal to zero right over here. We are here. So minus tan inverse zero. So it's zero. Okay. So the phase can also be drawn. Let's see how it goes. So this point is, and this is let's say phi phase. Uh, and this point is omega is equal to zero. And the phase is uh, zero right over here. Okay. Okay, for the case two, case two, where omega is, uh, uh, let's say, is approximately equal to omega c, or it is equal to omega c, omega c. So in that case, we come back, we'll see that omega uh, in this equation, right over here. If omega is equal to omega c, magnitude is one over root two, because this becomes one and this is one by root two. So what we can write here is this one. Uh, we have V of t divided by Vi of t, and that is equals to one over root two, which is 0 0.707, okay. So in this case, uh, we go back to magnitude plot and we see that somewhere here, we have omega is equal to omega C right here. here. We, we, we come down and then we see that the gain drops to the value of here, 0 0.707, okay? So in decibel, we have seen that decibel is nothing but uh, 20 log of magnitude of a that will give the value in db okay so here uh, is, is 0 db because 20 log 1 is 0 db okay and 20 log of 0 0.707 is minus 3 db approximately so this plot, uh, this point is uh, minus three dB. All right. So once that is obtained, so we can see that uh, at this point you, uh, where omega is equal to omega C, we have this cutoff frequency and the gain starts to drop or the response trans starts to drop. Similarly, uh, what is the value of the phase V of T divided by V I of T? approximately or let's say it is not approximately it is equal to so we go back and we we see that this expression so it is uh, this expression actually so minus tan inverse omega by omega c and when omega equals omega c so it is minus tan inverse of one so it's like minus 45 so we we can write here this is minus 45 degree, okay, the angle. So we come back to the graph of phase. This is magnitude actually. This is magnitude plot. And this is a phase plot or magnitude versus frequency. And this is phase versus frequency. So what see we here, we are here now at omega equal to omega C. And what we have is this phase drops to uh, minus 45. So it is minus 45. All right. Once that happens, we move to case three, which is phase three, where omega is considered to be very, very greater than omega C. So in that case, we again write the expression, obtain the expression for magnitude and the phase for this value. So that comes out to be 
let us check what happens when omega is very, very greater. So in this plot right over here, when omega is very, very uh, greater than omega c, so this uh, term right over becomes dominant and the denominator becomes dominant. So gain starts dropping heavily. Okay, so we, we understand this in the same way. We say that your gain starts dropping and here omega is very, very greater than omega c. Okay, and this drop rate is uh, called as uh, 20 dB is at the rate of 20 dB per decade. So what happens uh, 20 dB per decade for every 10, uh, uh, for every 10 times rise in the frequency, input frequency, uh, the gain drops by 20 dB, all right? So let's say if the omega C was one kilohertz and uh, uh, omega was one kilohertz and omega C, uh, Omega was one kilohertz, which is at the uh, omega C, and then omega goes to 10 kilohertz. So it is like per decade, all right, 10 times increase. So from minus 3 dB, we will come back, to, uh, come to the point of minus, uh, minus uh, right over here, we'll be here somewhere. So it will be like minus 23 dB, okay? For the phase, um, so we'll, we'll see that. Zero. All right. Uh, and the phase would be. It would be approximately we'll go back and see what is the phase. So phase, when the omega is very, very greater than omega C, so it is like tan inverse, uh, this, this value, minus of tan inverse, it goes to towards 90, minus 90 actually. So we come back and uh, we see here in the phase plot, uh, we are approaching the value of uh, minus 90 here, all right? So that's, this is the response of a low pass filter. This is called as low pass filter. Okay. And the ideal characteristics of the low pass filter would be, we have this gain and we have this response. So this is called as omega equal to omega C, which is cutoff frequency. And uh, similarly, the phase would be from zero to 45. And it would be zero right over here. So this is called pass band. This is called stop band. All right. This is zero and this is phase. Uh, so we have this zero degree and right over here is minus 45 because we are at this point. Let's say we are at this point. This is minus 45. And then for the rest of the for the rest of these band where the gain is zero, so we, we approach that is to be like this. So Let's say we are here. In this case, your omega is very, very greater than omega C and where the phase is approaching now, minus 90 degree. All right, so here we have this zero. So that's how we obtain the response of this uh, filter. Uh, we can always uh, derive the expression for another case, which is a high pass filter. So let us understand what, what is that. 